This is Aldonio Lengai, the only volcano on Earth that erupts a strange black lava. It's astounding because you get in this conundrum of being completely overawed and at the same time knowing how risky it is to, to be there because we know so little about behavior of Aldonio Lengai. Kate Laxton from University College London went to Tanzania to study this bizarre volcano. Aldonio Lenga hasn't been assessed, hasn't really had a physical since its last explosive eruption in 2007 to 2008. Since then, we haven't really got much of an idea of what's happening inside the crater because it's been you know, inaccessible 100 metres below the crater rim. And I wanted to know what was going on. Rather than looking at the differences between Ogonio Lengai and other volcanoes, what are the similarities? What technologies that we use at other volcanoes to monitor them can we use here? When the lava cools and mingles with the atmosphere, it turns a silvery white. Most lava contains a fair amount of silica, but Aldonio Lengai's black lava contains, among other things, a lot of sodium and calcium carbonate. So Aldonio Lengai is unique in the sense that it produces these effusive eruptions of natural carbonatite, but then it likes to explode every now and then with a silicate uh, lava. So that dynamic, that switch between effusive natural carbonatite volcanism and explosive silicate volcanism isn't very well understood at all. And those switches are what make this volcano particularly hazardous. In fact, it is probably the only volcano anywhere in the solar system still erupting carbonatite lava. And the deficit of silica means that it lacks the skeletal strength most other lavas possess allowing it to flow extremely quickly. It is unique in the sense that it erupts at very low temperatures for what we expect of lava. So it erupts anywhere between 400 and 600 degrees Celsius. Because the explosive eruption carved out this deep 100 meter crater, no one's been able to access the crater floor to collect samples like we used to by hand, using a, a scoop, for example. So. We had um, sort of screw in anchors and ropes stretched across and depending on what vents were active on the crater floor, we would be able to position the rope to cross over those. And then just using some simple pulleys, you know, just to use some uh, background climbing knowledge to, to go dip some samples. And I, I think because of the temperature of the lava being as cool it is, as it is, basic stainless steel cups we use cocktail shakers and wine measures. Um, you can just dip those straight in and they won't melt. Nothing will get damaged. The lava samples collected contain vital clues to the planet's underworld. Chemical signatures can reveal where in the mantle the ingredients for this strange magma originally came from, but also how they were cooked up in the first place. Essentially what we think happens is that there is a, a silicate magma reservoir somewhere below the volcano um, and then from that natural carbonatite immiscibly separates out a bit like oil and water at some depth within that plumbing system so the natural carbonatite inherently comes from a silicate parent but there's more to Aldonio Lengai than its strange black lava for me i wanted to bring it back down to earth and actually think about the real impacts that this active volcano has on the local communities and how we can better monitor this volcano because it's an attraction for tourists, it's a religious site for the local people and all of these different dynamics play such an important role in making the area what it is. It's the source of what I consider the fertility of the Serengeti. The ashes from Aldonia Lingai provide the nutrients that the Serengeti depends on. So there's this whole connection with Aldonio Lengai and the environment around it. And I think that's what makes it so special for the local communities and why it's so important to them. It absolutely blows your mind to be on the edge of that crater. So I would go back in a heartbeat. <laughs>